I remember going to see Hamilton, which is really, really great, obviously. But uh, <laughs> the second half, all I could see was my puppy's face. And I just say, like, this show is so long. Let me go home to my dog. <laughs> The Graham Norton Radio Show on Virgin Radio. My character Sophie, she um, she really thinks she's going to be very famous one day, like lots of us do, and um, <laughs> and uh, so she's sort of collecting things for her biographers in a really sort of and and it's a thing I don't know well especially I think it's a young person thing sometimes when you really think I'm going to do something one day I'm going to be I don't know what it is and she does she she thinks sometimes it could just be that she gets murdered but she just wants to make sure that her biographer can sort of go back and 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 the research is done and uh, I'm interested, you uh, you opened the book with a Jeanette Winterson quote, mm. uh, it is much better to read yourself as fiction, not as fact. Yeah. Uh, it, is that a clue to well, what the book is? I loved that quote from Jeanette Winterson's amazing autobiography, but I think that's something that we all do. We narrativize, narrativize our lives a little bit. And I think even more now with things like Instagram or reality TV, we're really aware of the external, super aware. Like a really common thing, I think, is like having a, a song play on your in your ears, I was going to say, you're from your iPod. <laughs> All right, Granny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure that it's your CD man. And, um, and you're walking along and suddenly you're in a film and it's it's you and London is a backdrop or wherever you live. I know we don't all live in London. Um, but, but for Sophie, that's in a really extreme version. She's very, very conscious of whether she's being watched to the point of paranoia. And I think, But I think if you make your life a story... And this is what stand-ups do. It makes it more tolerable. Yeah. You know, it makes it like, and then that was the end of that chapter or that's how we resolved that issue, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And also, isn't it weird how the story becomes true? Yeah, it, it becomes that's more true. That's your genuine memory. You can convince yourself. Yeah. It's like um, they did studies with, um, f uh, f you know, uh, what would you call it? Sort of adapted photographs. So they put pictures of people in hot air balloons as children <laughs> And then they showed them them again the next day and people could remember being in a hot air balloon because your brain just goes, well, must have, must have done it. Yeah. Must have done it then. So stand-ups, this is why people hate going out with us. Uh, we, <laughs> we have a version of events. We then tell everyone else and then that becomes the truth. Sorry. I know. I feel like I should warn what's in your in your tummy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You will be loved, but you'll be material. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to try hard not to do that, actually. I do, I'm really, For a minute. I really hope I have un, unfunny children. But but also, that's why it's going to be better having two, because then they'll have deniability. If I say my kid did a thing, they can both say that was the, the other, other one. one. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, because because um, they're quite close in age. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're you're covered. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you were talking the stand up continues, but obviously yes. you're going to take up a, a, a brief pause. A brief pause, but it's never too long because I just really miss it. Yeah, I really miss it. Your brain doesn't stop thinking of angles and writing things down and yeah so yeah. I always think I'll take a long gap but I'll be back yeah. but and after your first baby or like I guess yes. in the lead up to your first baby did you kind of think ooh is this going to change who I am as a performer is it am I you know particularly because you're so aware of the the hormones mm. and the this and the that you know all about yeah. that stuff did you did you kind of think ooh who will I be after this I like lots of people who hadn't had children hadn't really been very aware of what other parents had been going through all the time. I'd been really blinkered to it, you know, and having a lovely life. And I really thought I was going to, like, have the child, put it down, <laughs> hire lots of childcare and keep on with my career. And what I didn't realise is that um, you actually feel quite responsible for them. And um, suddenly, like, even going to gigs that weren't that far away, like Brighton, when they finished... Actually, I had the same thing when I adopted my dog, actually, because... The love, you, if you're away from them too long, you are sort of whiplashed back to them and yeah. you do want, want to run down the road, that last bit of the journey, just to go, <laughs> I've missed you so much, I brought you some ham. And then all of a sudden I had a baby that I felt that way about with as well. So it is a real precarious balance of doing the things you really love, but not doing... I don't enjoy going away. Yes, it's anymore. weird. People yeah. often describe, you know, I can only talk to dogs. Yeah. People talk to old dogs, they're such a tie. Mm. And you go, no, no, but I want to be tied. Yes, it's a willing, yeah, yeah it's a willing marriage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no one's making me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and that thing where you're just visualising, I remember going to see Hamilton, which is really, really great, obviously, but uh, <laughs> the second half, all I could see was my puppy's face. And I just say, like, this show is so long, let me go home to my dog. <laughs> I want to be in the room yes. where it's barking. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
exactly where he's just sleeping on his back yeah, yeah. I know I know and uh, the Great British Sewing Bee continues I'm guessing um, it de- definitely I think it will always continue it's such a popular programme yeah. it's really what I love about it is when people tell me it's their feel-good viewing. You think, how lovely to be part of something which doesn't make people feel worse about their lives. (laughs) 